Hey friends, welcome to the Audacity Bootcamp. In this video, I want to talk about the playhead within Audacity, show you some of the properties, some of the ways that you can manipulate it to get it to behave differently, and also talk about pinning the playhead in your display. So let's get started. Hey, Mike Adams here with the Audacity Bootcamp. In this video, let's talk about pinning the playhead and some of the properties of the playhead within Audacity. I've got a screen open here with a recording that I made just a few minutes ago. It's recorded just through my internal mic on my laptop. There's no editing, it's not real good quality, but it's there for the purposes of illustration and of using in this episode. So let's look at this. When we've got the screen open like, like I have it here, if we just push the space bar, uh, Audacity begins to play. At, at this, in this particular instance, I have the playhead at the zero point. You can see it right up there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. So if I press space bar, it's just going to start playing this. So let's do that. This is an audio track that I'm using through my internal mic, unedited. It's just here for the purposes of this lesson when we're going to talk about the playhead, the properties of the... Okay, so we know that. It's, it's you know, what we do all the time. Not a big deal there. But did you notice that when I pushed the space bar that the playhead actually changed to green? Let's watch it again up here in the uh, time uh, bar. This is an audio track that I'm using through my internal mic. That green down pointing triangle is your playhead. When you're recording, that color of that playhead is going to turn to red so that you know that you're recording. But in playback, it's always green. Well, we can do some things with this playhead if we want to. For example, if I take my cursor and I go all the way over here to the right, by the way, I should show you this, I guess. Let me zoom out a little bit. This is just, I uh, just pasted, I recorded the original thing and then I pasted it in three more times so that we could get something that goes off the screen. But these are the same audio just repeated over and over again. So I'm going to zoom back in here a little. And then I'm going to place my cursor here about the 15 second mark. And I'm going to let it go off the screen and, and then we'll talk about that. This is an audio track that I'm using through my internal mic, unedited. It's just here for the purposes of this. So again, you're familiar with that. You know, it normally when the playhead goes off the screen, it resets itself back to the left and it kind of moves the playhead back over and you get to look at the next section of audio. And that's fine. For me though, that's a little bit of a hard way to edit. I like to pin the playhead so that the playhead is stationary in the center of my screen and instead the waveform moves through the playhead instead of the playhead moving through the waveform. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to skip back to the beginning here with my playhead, and I'm going to go here to the green triangle, which is where we can set properties for the playhead. And if I just click once on it, I can go down here and I can tell it to pin the playhead. And when I pin the playhead, as soon as I start to play or start to record, the, the playhead is going to be centered in my screen. So for example, if I put the playhead here, say at about the three and a half second mark, Normally, when I hit spacebar, it would just start playing right there, and the waveform wouldn't move until the playhead went off the screen. But watch what happens now when I've got the playhead pinned. Mic, unedited. It's just here for the purposes of this lesson when we're going to talk about the playhead, the properties of the playhead. So you see the difference there. It pins the playhead, and you know that the playhead's pinned because, again, I'm going to hit spacebar, and you'll see that the playhead, instead of being the downward triangle, it's a little green thumbtack. So watch this. Mic, unedited. It's just here for the purposes of this lesson when we're going to talk about. And so that's the pinned playhead and playback. But if I'm using the pinned playhead while I'm recording, instead of a green thumbtack, it's going to be a red thumbtack. Remember, red always is an indication that you're recording something onto your track. Now let me show you a couple other things. If I bring my cursor back over here to the 15 second mark, you know, we did this a second ago where the um, playhead scrolls off the screen and the waveform shifts over and it starts over again at the left and it goes through and just keeps doing that over and over again, depending on how long my track is. But let me show you something up here in preferences. If I go up to the Audacity drop down window and I go into preferences, if for some reason this check mark right here where it says auto scroll if head unpinned, if that is unchecked, then your uh, playhead or record head is just going to go off the screen. You're never going to see it again. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to uncheck this. I'm going to click OK. And again, I've got the cursor here at about the 15 second mark. I'm going to push space to play. 
and you'll see that the playhead scrolls off the screen never to be seen again. But before I can show you that, it's important that we unpin that playhead. Remember, we pinned the playhead to the center. So if I come back up here to what used to be the green triangle, which is now a green uh, pin cushion or a pin point, if I click on it again and I tell it to not pin the playhead, and then I come back to my cursor here at about 15 second mark and I push play, watch what happens. This is an audio track that I'm using through my internal mic, unedited. It's just here for the purposes of this lesson. My playhead went off the screen. I have no idea where it is as it goes off the screen. Now, if you've got, if you're zoomed out far enough to be able to just watch the playhead, that's not a big deal. But normally when you're editing your audio, you want to be zoomed in pretty close because, you know, editing, you're, you're editing and you're doing some post-production stuff. And so you want to be close enough to that waveform to be able to uh, edit out things that don't belong there and make it sound better and make it sound smoother. Well, when I hit that playhead or when I hit the space bar, my playhead scrolled off the end of the track. You know, when I was first using Audacity, somehow I unchecked that. And I didn't know I had unchecked it. But I remember coming in and, and playing a track or recording a track. I don't remember which one I was doing. And that playhead just went off the end and, I, you know, it kind of freaked me out. And I thought, hey, wait, wait, where did it go? Well, again, it's just if you go up to Audacity, drop down to Preferences. And again, just make sure that Auto Scroll if head is unpinned is checked. And once it's checked, if I push my space bar. This is an audio track that I'm using through my internal mic, unedited. You can see it goes ahead and for the purposes uh, scrolls on through. Now, let me show you something else about the playhead. You can go into what's called Quick Play with Audacity. Let me show you what that is. If we come back up here to our playhead triangle and mouse click, left click it again, we can tell it to enable quick play. And what quick play does is as I move my mouse, you see up here in the, uh, the time bar, it brings up a little tooltip. It says quick play is enabled. What that means is that now if I left click my mouse one time, it'll start playing at that point. So I'm going to left click my mouse right now and watch what happens. Of this lesson, when we're going to talk about the playhead, the properties of the playhead. And so if I move my cursor over here again and I quick play. Talk about the playhead, the properties of the playhead, and how to pin. And let me show you one other thing here while we're talking about quick play. While I've got quick play enabled, if I click pinned playhead, and I come here and let's say I want to start here at 20 seconds and I left click the mouse to uh, quick play. Just here for the purposes of this lesson, when we're going to talk about the playhead, the properties of the playhead, and how to pin the playhead. It also pins the playhead to the center of the display, like we would expect with pin playhead, but it also has quick play enabled, and so it's a quick way to get around in my track and be able to play from a certain point. Now, let me show you something else. If I select a portion of the track, let's say I'm going to go here from about 20 seconds through I don't know, 25, 26 seconds, somewhere in there, and I select a portion of the track, you'll see that up in the uh, time bar that I have a gray selection there, which is normal. It's what we would expect. But if I come over here to our playhead again, and I click lock play region, that play region turns red. And what that means is that regardless of where I have the cursor in my timeline, when I click play, I'm only going to play that locked section. It's always going to come back to that locked section. So let me come back over here to the uh, playhead. Let's disable quick play for just a moment. And let's uh, disable pinned playhead. And let's put our cursor here at, I don't know, 30 seconds. Let's say, you know, I forgot I've got this locked over here and I'm, I want to listen from 30 seconds on. And I, I push the space bar to play. What it's going to do, it's going to play that locked position instead. Here for the purposes of this lesson, when we're going to talk about the playhead, the properties of the playhead. And so it plays through that selection one time. Let me show you something else related to this locked section. Just like if I were to select a piece of track over here and hold down shift while I'm hitting my space bar and it would just play through that a highlighted area over and over again until I hit shift again or until I stop playing. That's also the same way with the locked uh, track section. If instead of just pushing the space bar, I hold down shift and push space bar, it's going to play through that locked section over and over again until I tell it not to. So let me show you that. I'm holding down shift and space. 
here for the purposes of this lesson when we're going to talk about the playhead the properties of the playhead here for the purposes of this lesson when we're going to talk about the playhead and so you can kind of see how that operates you know the uh I don't really use that locked uh, section much. I don't really lock that in. I, you know, I, I prefer just to come over and highlight a piece of track if I'm going to listen to something in it. Uh, I don't usually use the locked section. I suppose it has a purpose, but to me it's, uh, it's kind of awkward. It's a little bit clumsy. But let me show you something else too while we've got that locked. It's also effective with the play at speed tool. So if I click the uh, play button here in the play at speed tool. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to play that lock section only Here for the purposes of this lesson when we're going to talk about the playhead the properties of the playhead So it'll play through that entire thing and same thing if I hold down space bar and I push the play at speed toolbar Or the play at speed button you'll see that it turns into a circle there saying that it's going to loop through and just like the regular play button it will loop through so I can take my play at speed, I can slow it down, I can speed it up. I talked about the play at speed in a previous video if you want to go check that video out. So I'm not going to go into a lot of that here, but it's the same function. You can lock a section of track and uh, uh, listen to it over and over again with either the regular play button in the transport toolbar or the play button in the play at speed toolbar. So you can do it either way. Now I'm going to go back up here to my playhead. I'm going to take that off the lock playhead and I'm going to once again pin the playhead because that's my preference. I prefer having the playhead pinned when I'm editing. It's just easier for me. I found that it saves me a lot of time. If I come into the uh, area here, let's say I'm going to go here at about 25 seconds and I'm going to zoom in because I'm doing some editing and I want to get, that's a little bit too far for me, I want to get a little bit closer to it. Let's go in one second intervals and let's actually bring it back here a bit and let's play through this with the uh, playhead pinned. This lesson when we're going to talk about the playhead, the properties of the playhead and how to pin the playhead. So normally this is where I would have it. Otherwise I'm constantly shifting uh, the waveform over it doesn't you know it when the playhead runs off the right the entire waveform shifts over with whatever I've got uh, Showing in the window and sometimes that's just too much and it's a lot to, It's a lot for me to keep shuffling that stuff around So I like to keep my playhead pinned whenever I'm editing. That's just personal preference So hey, if you like this video Please subscribe. Please hit notify and tell others about the audacity boot camp Especially if you like what's going on here with the audacity boot camp and just one more reminder, I do teach a course called Audacity Bootcamp Beginner to Advanced at Udemy.com. The link is below in this video if you're interested in checking that out. So I'll see you in the next video.